Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So, I was taking a look around the internet and I found this really cool uh, two-toned sort of graphic and I wanted to animate it here in After Effects and I'll be showing you guys how you, you can create this from scratch and um, how we can quickly put a two-tone graphic together. It doesn't have to be this sort of holiday sort of graphic. It could be anything, but this is really just for a two-tone uh, concept. So here's what we'll be creating right here in After Effects. So kind of like a snowy little Christmassy scene. And it's really simple, but really this was the, to go over the two-tone concept and how we can kind of quickly create these graphics. So let's jump right here into After Effects. And I already have a background in here, which is a sort of a darker, sort of a medium uh, blue color here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our lips tool and we're gonna create the land, which you saw. So I'm gonna use the ellipse tool to do this because I want it to be perfectly, uh, you know, round. So what we're gonna do is kind of just draw out like a oval, kind of like this. And I have my color too, I guess, uh, sort of a nice little light yellow there. Um, and and those are gonna be my two colors in my palette. And with this uh, selected here, I might want to go into the ellipse and I might want to increase the size by a little bit, just depending on what I want to do. And then I'm kind of probably gonna put this right here and make it a little bit bigger. And then let's go and uh, duplicate the ellipse by going up to edit, duplicate, and make sure the ellipse is selected and we'll just duplicate it there. And we can kind of maybe come over here, bring this to the side, to the side here, and then we'll duplicate it one more time and we'll bring this one to the middle and we'll go into the ellipse path here and increase the size, make this one just a little bit larger, maybe like this. All right, and then maybe what we'll do is close up the shape layer. We'll call this one land. And let's bring it down by a little bit because, you know, Lando's too big. So recently I made a tutorial where I created uh, vectors inside of Illustrator. And I want to go ahead and use this tree vector right here so I don't have to recreate it. And of course you can go to this tutorial and download all these vectors here. And also maybe even check them, check out how to create it if you never used Illustrator before. So here are my Christmas vectors and I'm going to bring them right here into After Effects. I'm going to import it as a composition. And... As you see, we have our Christmas tree right here, which is basically just three triangles and like a rectangle sort of added together. So if you really wanted to create this, you could, but I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off all of our layers here and we'll just have our Christmas tree right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually animate this right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the puppet tool right here and I'm gonna kind of go zoom in here and we're gonna add three points in here, four points actually. We're gonna add a point right here and we're gonna add like three points right below it. So now if we uh, scrub through here, maybe go to two seconds and we take this top point here and we kind of like wiggle it a little bit. As you can see, it will animate just by a little bit and you know, make it just a little bit more interesting. Maybe it's just like, you know, the wind is blowing and you know, it's making the tree move and just really, um, so we don't have like a static image either. So I just went through this entire, you know, went through seven seconds and animated this. And let's go back into our, you know, our comp here and let's bring in our Christmas tree, which is part of that vector. And what we need to do is go up to Effect, Generate, Fill. And we need to make sure we have that creamy color selected there and paste that right in there. And then we can kind of go here and start positioning this um, to kind of you know work out for our comp. And one thing I'll do is I'll vectorize it by doing this little rasterize icon down here. And we can kind of just start placing this in our you know places here. So put it there, duplicate it. Maybe we'll put it one here. Duplicate it again. Maybe put this one over here or over here. And finally, for our last vector, I have a vector of a deer, which I downloaded for free off of freepix.com. Remember, you can always download these project files. Um, and I really suggest if you don't like like me, I'm not a master illustrator. So downloading this was an absolute must. And sometimes you can get away with doing things really fast when you can just download uh, vector files. And FreePix is a fantastic site because they offer a lot of free, fantastic vectors. So be sure to check them out. But we'll be using this deer uh, vector file in here, which I'll just import right here into our comp here and go up to Effect, Generate, Fill. And we'll go ahead and put our cream color on there. And we'll go ahead and vectorize it and we'll scale it down a little bit. And we'll put it right into our place here. And one thing we need to do is also is to puppet tool this one as well. Maybe we'll move the head of our uh, awesome deer. All right, and let's go to the puppet pen tool here and let's zoom into our comp. 
and we want to maybe turn the head of the deer. So we can come here, put one point there, and put like say three points below it, and then move to like you know two seconds ish, and then we can kind of wiggle the head a little bit. I'm sorry, it's a little pixelated, but um, you know I don't have the greatest computer in the world, but it is a pretty good computer. Anyway, just going here and moving the head of the deer, just kind of back and forth a little bit, it creates just a little bit of awesome animation. And we take a look here. The head is kind of moving there. So I think that's pretty cool. Of course, you could probably add it like another point down here to kind of keep the feet in place. But I think for the most part, you know, that's how you can create some very subtle uh, animation for this sort of two-tone thing. But let's go ahead and create the snow of this uh, scene. So let's go up, go up to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll call this one Snow. And we'll click OK. And let's go up to Effect. And we'll go to Simulation. And we'll use the CC Particle World Effect. And let's go into the producer and let's really just increase the radius of this, you know, X and Y until it fills the entire comp here. And let's go into the particle and let's add, set this to a faded sphere. And let's set these birth and death color to that cream color as well. So it stands out on the blue background. And let's set the birth and death size to 0 0.05 for the birth and death, 0 0.05 for death. And then let's go to the max opacity and set that to 100%. And then let's go back up to the top under birth rate. And we need to set this to like some maybe five or six. And maybe set the longevity to six as well. And then let's go into the physics. And let's set the animation type to twirl. And the velocity to 0.2. And then finally the gravity to 0 0.04 and actually just one more setting let's go to the resistance here maybe set it to uh, 0.5 so now if we scrub through here I'll just solo this real fast we have some nice snow downfall and it should be really nice for our composition here so I also wanted to add a uh, sort of a big snowflake to this and I just googled searched this I typed in uh, snowflake to find this so I didn't have to create it myself so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this into our comp here. You know, there's our snowflake. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our snow layer, which is our particles. And, you know, this is where, where the fun's going to begin because I didn't want to animate all these in here. Uh, so let's turn off our snowflake layer. And let's go into this. Uh, actually, let's rename our snow layer here and let's call it snowflake. And then let's go ahead and go into the particle. And let's set the particle type to a textured quad polygon. And let's open up that texture tab right there. And let's set the texture layer to uh, the snowflake PNG file. And we got some nice snowflakes in there. You can't see them yet. So we're going to go here and we're going to tweak some settings. So let's go to the birth size and let's set this to 0.6 and also the depth size to 0.6 as well. And as you see, we have all these uh, snowflakes in here. And let's go to the size variation and set it to 0%. And I'm going to really try to keep this uh, all consistent here so we don't have any like bigger or smaller or any, all these uh, snowflakes doing weird things. So we're going to keep it consistent. And then we need to go here to the initial rotation and set that to 0. And also the rotation speed to 0 as well. And there we have our consistent line of particles. And let's go into the producer over here and let's really just increase the radius x and the Y as well, kind of limit the amount of uh, particles in here. And then let's go into like the physics here and let's set the resistance to two, just because we don't want these to be falling down way too fast. And, you know, there we have a nice, uh, you know, slew of particles. Maybe we'll um, lower the birth rate down to maybe like three or something. And then let's go up to effect, generate, fill. And let's go ahead and paste our palette into there. And now let's go ahead and create like a title for us. And let's go grab the ellipse tool. And what I did is hold down Alt and Shift on my keyboard to kind of draw out like a perfect circle like that. And of course, I made sure nothing was selected. So it created a shape layer for me. And then I went to the Add button here. And I added a repeater. And we'll go ahead and open this up a little bit. We'll go into the Transform Repeater. And we'll go to the position here. And we'll kind of bring these a little bit closer to each other like that, like by lowering the X position. And then we go here to the number of copies and we can kind of increase that across the board. Of course, that was a little too much. And 
you know, maybe that's okay. And then let's go to the, like one second or something or two seconds. Let's add a keyframe for the number of copies. Let's move that forward in time and I'll set the number of copies to two. I mean, sorry, and the number of copies to zero. And so we'll have this nice little animation here. And then maybe we'll go ahead and, you know, go over here, enable our title safe, which so is this little icon right here. And we'll kind of take our shape layer and try to center it in the middle, maybe like that. And then let's go and uh, maybe we'll call this one uh, dotted, dotted line. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, hit P on our keyboard, position this up by a little bit. And then now we can go here and we can go to our text title tool. And let me turn off the big snowflake for a second. And we can come here and maybe type in a text or something. I'll do happy holidays. And I'm using the font Bella Rose, if anyone's interested in that. And of course, I think it's a free font. Yeah, it is a free font. <laughs> and then go here and just center this up to on the Align tab. If you don't see the Align tab, go up to Window, Align. And we can kind of go here, just center it up between our dots. And then what I did, was, which was really cool, was I right-clicked our, uh, text, our text layer down here. And I clicked on Create Mask from Text. And I'll create a separate layer here, which is really awesome. Let's go up to Effect Generate Stroke. And let's set this to All Mask. And let's set the Paint Style to Reveal Original Image. And then we can go to the Brush Size and just really increase that until it takes up you know, all of our text here. So it looks like the original text is coming on like this. And then we can go come here to like, you know, right here when our dots start coming on. So let's go ahead and set the end to 0% and let's add a keyframe for the start and let's move forward in time to like maybe right here and let's set the start to 100%. So now we scrub through here, the text will kind of just be, uh, you know, uh, writing on. So that's pretty awesome. And then uh, we can't really change the color of our text up here. So what we need to do is make sure our solid layer is selected and go up to uh, layer and click on solid settings and we can come here to the color and just kind of paste in our uh, our hex code. Go ahead and turn our snowflake particles back on. And one thing we need to do is turn on motion blur for everything except for our snowflake particles and make sure to enable motion blur at the top here. If you have on the motion blur for the snowflake particles, I think it can look a little bit too uh, distracting. And that's basically how I created this scene right here in After Effects. I just thought it was really cool, kind of relaxing to make a sort of a two-tone graphic. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like because it helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more After Effects tutorials. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.